Hello, this is Victor. I'm here with a new painting tutorial and this is going to be a series of quite a long se a series where I will explain how I will paint um, uh, Mortarion, so the Primarch of, mm, of the Death Guard, the, the Demon Prince of Norgal. So here we have Mortarion, this is the press hamlet that I did and I want to show you how this is assembled. So it's, the, the guy is not glued to the base, so I use tack to put him in the base just for priming and helping me on the assembly. So the first part is to show how I will divide in pieces. So you can see what with blue tack we are going to solve this. These two norglins are attached to the base. I was thinking that it's not making a big difference. This norglin is not attached to the base so it can be painted apart. And I will paint it uh, apart to, to help me because it goes between the legs. This can be put on the base directly. But anyway, you can put it like that on a normal base and then paint it, okay? So this is the first part. All this, it, all the base is glued now. Okay, so I will paint them, I will, I, I will work on, on them. So you can see I put them, I, I literally integrate the base they have uh, and yeah, although it looks messy, it, it's, the, the, it's what I wanted to look for. So what else, what are other parts are not glued? So I did not glue I did not glue the, the, the head, so the head can be removed and you can see also this arm can be removed. Okay, this is done in purpose. What I glued is this thing here, so I can attach this to there. As you can see, the wings are not glued neither, so I will paint them separately. Okay, and I did not glue neither the tube that goes here. Uh, to help me on, on the painting. So I have all these parts. All those parts that are not glued are the... is half of the body. Okay, I will disassemble this now. And of course I did not glue the part at the back. So this was only put together to help me on the priming. Okay, so and if I'm not wrong, these are all the parts that I keep separated. No, the arm can also be disattach okay and it's to help me as well to have as minimum the minimum things around here to be attached so I, I it's quite fixed okay you see here was not even glued so was not even put um, tack this part can be attached because there is a good interference so all this pass out and I will start, this is going to be the first piece I will start painting. So I will remove now the tack that I use, this is quite easy to remove. And as you can imagine that these are going to be the different parts that we will paint. Why I keep like that? I want to have a good access to the armor. So although there are some parts that are a little bit hidden, with that I have, I have very easy access to the armor, to the legs. I don't have another thing on this side. So I really think of a lot how to do all these parts. Of course, then when I go to paint the, I will paint all the inside, I will paint the inside of the clothes as well, but I will not paint, while I'm in that position, I will not paint what is outside the clothes. You can paint here as well, this is not going to be too visible, I guess I, I will paint some parts that are not going to be very visible once the uh, mortarion is assembled, but this is the pay, uh, the, the, what you have to pay uh, when you do the, um, when you want to go into the detail. There are some parts that are still challenging, maybe you should, they can get separated, like this thing here. There's going to be challenge to paint. But I think we, we have a good, a good uh, part. So, I will keep the clothes, so I, maybe I will do parts of the clothes before assemble. And then of course I will put the second part of the clothes and we will work. So we are going to do white faces. But in this first part of the tutorial, I will paint the base and the northern, so you can see how this goes. Okay, and uh, this first part is just to show how I will do the base. So the base, as you can see, I put some plaster to simulate. I want to simulate, my, my idea on the base is to simulate a, a, a moody, moody, um, uh, a moody space, no? rocks on top of a very muddy thing. So I add some additional rocks and the rest is going to be mud, uh, or mud, uh, mud, uh, sorry. So let's start uh, painting first the rocks because the mud will go will dirt in the rocks. The rocks will not dirt in the mud. So I always think 
when you want to paint something, what is the order? In which order we, uh, one is different than the other? And in that case, the mat will different the rocks, and not the rocks, the mat. Okay? We are going to remove all, all the tack from here. So I remove the tack, and I, uh, just give me a minute to remove the tack. This is not making, uh, and I come back. As you can see, the tack has been eliminated. It's, 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 it's removable. Quite easy removal. I just use uh, uh, this uh, toothstick to remove it from the holes, and with that you, you can remove it from everywhere. So now we are going to apply the base color. I will apply. Um, um, we will start with the stone burning fur for the rocks. I will go for a grey brownish brownish um, rocks, something that is contrasting with the brown mud. So you do, you want the rocks to contrast a little bit to give. And in that case, I don't don't be. I use a big brush and go fast. Try to adjusting a little bit the paints, but make your life easy. And just make a fast work here. So I will do that very fast, and I come back once this is done and dry. This is how they look like once they have dry. Uh, the, the previous layer has dry. Now we are going to do some dry brushing. Uh, as I normally do for the rock. So we start with downstone. This will not create too much contrast. Okay. We are going to take a bit brush for that. We start. As you can see this will give very little. But it's better to start little uh, step by step. So I will do first downstone. Okay. So I do all the rocks with downstone dry brush and I come back once I have done that. So the first dry brush is done and now we will do a second dry brush with administrator grey. So this is much lighter grey and this will give more contrast. So the first was giving uh, a little bit of bluish tonality. Because downstone is more bluish than the the berm, stone berming fur is more on the brown grey. So we are going to, to apply a dry brush on that and this should start popping up all the details. And this is rock. Rocks are okay if you are a little bit chucky. And you do rocks, you want a, a little bit of draft uh, finishing, right? So, uh, so I try to be a little bit chucky and I will So I do that and I come back once it's done. So this how it looks like after applying the administrator grey. And now I will do another highlight with more a greenish color. I will use the under high hash. This is a dry color. I only use these dries really to, to make uh, for the rocks because they are too chucky for my taste there, for my taste. So as you can see, they are really, really, really chalky. So, but I want to give this green filter or this green tone to the rocks, okay? To show the corruption of Norgal will help to, to show this corruption of Norgal with this green touch. You can see we are popping up very easily.
I keep doing all with this green and I'm back. So this is how the rocks are looking like right now. And now I'm going to do this small details there and I was really thinking about how to do that. And I think I was the, um, thinking myself if I wanted to do them uh, green or how to do it. And I will them, them look like a little bit fleshy. Like if the corruption of Norgal is so strong that is yeah that like if this is like f uh, corrupted flesh no so I will start applying uh, what I'm applying now is Kislev flesh to do this fleshy tone there and we are going to do this on all these open things I will try to avoid to paint over this small worms that are uh, all over the place or larvas I guess they are more larvas uh, I guess they are like the fly the la larvas so I will try to paint uh, to keep them apart because I will keep them white okay I want to paint these small larvas in white or maybe in a very pale green but I want them to contrast with the other thing that we don't know if it's X or just I don't know what this really wants to be but it's really a nasty looking and then we have like a slime streams so I will do them like that and of course all these will go glossy at the end so no the, the what I'm doing now is just apply a uh, Kislev flesh, a very pale flesh okay, on these crevices that have this type of texture, very strange texture okay, uh, go very thin in the case because you want to really keep the texture, you want the white to then do the job for you okay, always and this is the big, one of the big tips always paint very thin and let the sculpt do the work for you this will be mainly the main tip when you manage that this that the paints that you don't need to do the work of the school the school in what is the school that is making the work for you it's when you really take full advantage of the paint job so I will do that and I come back once this is done okay this school looks like now and now I'm going to start painting the this type of slime streams and I will start using Elysian Green. So I will do this slime things, slimy things in in like a greenish color. Uh, and I want to do a color that is I don't want to go for the typical radioactive green. I want to go for something that is more more desaturated. No way. So I will apply this. You want it to fade out. And take into, into account that I will apply rose varnish later on on all these things. Okay. And the important thing is when we do these ones here, I want to ensure that I don't leave any gray thing because this for me are really this drops looks quite nasty to be fair This color is pretty similar to Norgal Rod, a little bit more brighter green. But I prefer to use this than Norgal Rod at this point. Okay. So, we'll, as you can see, I'm doing all these slimes. All these streams of slime or whatever is this nasty thing there. 
these rocks are extremely detailed are full of strange things okay for example if you look here there are a lot of these nasty slimy things and most likely I miss yeah here I miss some of this I don't know if this represents to be eggs or what really they want to be with that or just something nasty so I forgot here some so this I will go It's just sometimes thinking how is that I take the paint directly from the pot. One thing that I do is most of the time I thin down directly the paint of my pot with some water. Okay. I add water to the paint in the pot. Uh, this helps to make the life of the pot or to minimize the risk that is drying okay. and also makes my life easy I don't need because it's already thin inside of the pot okay you see how it looks like now so we will do the same on the other rock and I'm back when I have finished with this slide how it looks like with all these slimy things uh, pinpoint and now I will do uh, one of the first washes and I will do use uh, flesh, uh, regular flesh shade okay on all this type of I don't know really how to call this on all these fleshy things that I painted I try to go quite soft I using a quite little brush I want to avoid to, to accumulate too much okay I want to control so we can but to be fair we don't need my good brush to do that we can use one of the brushes that are already damaged I like to have brushes that are already a little bit damaged to do this type of things here I'm thinking now that we can use the glossy if you want you can use the glossy version of this I'm not using the glossy the glossy one uh, you can uh, for this one a little bit of glossiness is not going to be bad but I'm using the standard one okay and again if you see that is not giving all the the finishing that you like let it dry and do a second layer uh, as, uh, I always recommend washes have to be treated as any other paint if you think that is not doing all this definition that you want if you think that is not sharing as much as you would like do a second layer instead of making a thick layer as any other paint because they also these the washes although they are very thin okay if you put too much they don't work well later okay so I will put this around all these type of blisters X I don't know how to call these things okay you can see I'm also putting this on the ones that are not really on the crevices of the rocks even the ones that are individual and if you dirty this can make nasty, this can enhance the nasty look of these things okay go here so you do that as, I, as usual I do that and I come back once this has dry okay this hole looks like no and next step I'm going to apply um, 
screaming school on this small school that is there. So you see that the slime is looking quite interesting right now. But I don't want it to look super contrasting. So I think it's it's a good compromise to use this desaturated uh, green. Okay, we are going to uh, contrast a little bit more. So I apply this to here. This is screaming is cool. keep the slime thing have the eye socket or eye hole okay and with the same screaming school we are going to paint all these small larvas that we have all over the rocks and most likely we are going to miss some of them this is not a problem so if you miss some you paint it later okay we have all these type of small larvas worms all over the place so we try to pick them all So I will keep doing that and I'm back when I'm done. Okay, so you can see now that we have these little um, larvas or worms around there. Now I'm going to use a flat uh, one, flat one flesh, okay? And with that I'm going to pop up some of these small looking eggs or eggs like or something like that that we have around there, the biggest ones. So we are going to we don't need to um, touch them all, we just touch some of them, okay, you can focus maybe on the biggest ones, just to give, it's going to look like these weird blisters of almost flesh on the rock the idea here is to increase the nastiness of all these type of looking like looking eggs or things on the rocks so it's up to your choice how many you want to touch how many you want to Pop up or how much you want to use, how much um, fluid one fluid you want to use. Okay, okay, I'm not touching this one. Okay, for example, we have some big ones. Just need to touch more than one. Okay, I keep doing that and I'm back once I'm done with this. This hole looks like now that I have pinpoint some of these type of blisters or okay, little legs. And now I'm going to apply Ogwin Camo to do a slightly highlight on this type of limes. Uh, this will give a little bit more contrast and make it, it look it will pop it up ok 
Okay. So you can see I try to take the edges. So you try no, no. You don't want to cover the green we did before. You just want to take some of these. Okay, you see like that. And here I take the other edge. Here I go like that. So just to make it a little bit more contrasting, more visible. Okay, so you can see here, uh, I do the other rock and I come back. So before starting with the nurgles, we are going to do a couple of washes here to give a little bit more contrast on some parts. So I take quite a standard brush quite a battery to one and I will start applying um, I will apply <coughs> sorry, seraphine sepia okay I'm going to apply this on this small larvas worms that we have okay we, we try to just apply it on top of them to keep a little bit break a little bit this whiteness and also will show the segmentation of the body and we are going to apply this as well on the skulls okay so I will do that on all the larvas and I come I'm back continue with the work so seraphine sep is applied and next I'm going to apply Agrax air shade on some mainly on the crevices of the rocks and on the holes that we have there uh, this will give some extra depth to some parts of the rock. So, but this is where the nuggling goes, but where I wanted to play, for example, uh, uh, in these holes. Okay, so I'm going to play it here, here. This will give some extra depth in some parts. Uh, I will not apply it everywhere, for example, we can do it in that part here. Okay, try not to do them. Too much and try to be precise when I apply this. Okay, so I go. Okay. The other option is just to wash almost everything, but then you have to be careful not to and the work we did with this with all the other stuff that we just did so this way I prefer to do it in more easy way okay we do it like that so I do the rest and I'm back for this time okay so now we have done the Agrax air shade and you see that I have add I also add very thin layers of Agrax air shade on some of these to increase the, the, the shading I did as well here on the bottom of the rocks a little bit of Agrax air shade as well and now we are going to paint the nuglings and for the nuglings I will do I'm using a very light green okay, I will use a Elysian green and I will try to transition it to flesh. I will make a, like a combination of this with fleshy colors. So I, let me do this nuggling here. Okay, will help me to show what I mean. And I will do the other one uh, of. Uh, and I will just do now the skin because I want to finish. I really want to finish the base. But to finish the base, I need to do this. We can use this green, we can use other green, so just use the green that, the green that you like it. We are going to desaturate this green later on. Okay, first I will apply green all over the skin and then I will show you. I will just do a little bit the base of the tentacles. So I apply this green and I come back once this is done. So once the base color is applied, 
The next thing I will try to do a transition to a flesh color and I will use uh, Bookman's Glow that is quite a, a darker skin tone because I don't want I want to really have contrast. So first we paint the extreme of the tentacles. Okay, then what it's going to be quite a strong, strong contrast first. Okay, this one is goes to the front. This here so Okay, I will do the same at the bottom. Okay, remember, nugglings are quite small miniatures. Okay. And now I'm going to take Elysian Green. And I'm going to mix it here. Okay, we'll create like when you mix these two, we'll create like brown or the saturated green, and as well the saturated flesh tone. And you can see that it's helping to mix. So that's we'll do the same here. You take green color no, the, what, the. okay we take a little more green we want to do the other side almost like glazing now and we have this we keep really the dark green at the end okay we are going to not correct all the mistakes and I will do the same for the trump there Another thing that I want to share, uh, we can use other greens as well, so for this guy to make it a little bit different I use Ogreen Camo and it's a base color of Ogreen Camo. So you can play with different greens to give different skin tones and give different looks to the to the Narglims. Okay, for example that case I will do the, the trunk, uh, the, the, this part here like this, uh, like these tentacles. Okay. Okay. So I I will I will do do no the other one and I come back once it is done. So this how it looks like both nurglings. I hope you can see them. And they, they, they don't get lost. Now I'm going to paint some of the clothes. Here we can play with different colors, and I think it's uh, I will use no venom blade brown, for example, to do this the cloth of this guy. They, they have like a type of hoods, okay. So I recommend that you use 
I, I recommend to use the saturated browns to, to do this, this type of hoods. So I will paint that. Okay, I will here I will apply Benoit Brown. I will apply different browns on, on them. So uh, but no, I'm just doing base colors, okay? So I do that and I come back once this is done. Okay. First I use Venblade Brown and now I'm going to use Gothel Brown on the clothes of the other two guys. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Maybe this part of the tutorial is taking quite a long part, but there is a lot of work here. So we are doing the navelings, we are doing the base, and yeah, it's quite... So I will paint, this is quite more difficult to show, because this guy is, is carrying a big bin on top of his head. Uh, but I will apply this here, okay, and I will apply on the on the clothes of this other nargle that we have here. So this one, this is the one that goes here on the rock, but it's easier to paint it in a separately. Okay, so I do that. Okay, I paint these two clothes, and I'm back. So now that we have done the, the, the clothes, I'm going to do a wash and instead of, instead of using a green wash, I will use Reglan flesh shade, okay? So I will use a reddish wash and this is to give this sensation of rotted flesh or how you want to call it. It's, it's just to give this reddish uh, finishing. So we are going to apply this and we'll give this reddish type of uh, shading that will combine even very well with the uh, <coughs> sorry with the part that we did with flesh before okay so I apply that and I will do the same on all the other nargles so you do that on the nargles and I come back to show you how it looks like okay now we are going to work uh, the metals and I will use for this metal parts uh, Balthazar gold. This is a quite, is, is, they call it Balthazar gold but it's more like a copper color. So we are going to apply this on the, on all the metal parts. This include this part here, okay, sorry that I went. And I will also do the balls of the other guy. So I will do here, for example, I will do this type of uh, incense bearers that he has okay all this so we're going to do here here the mm, small bells okay so we are going to do all these parts and as well this part here so I will apply Balthazar gold on all this and I will be back once this is done So now I have done all these metals and I will do the rod and I will for the rod I will use Valor Brown. So I'm using, as you can see, yellowish and I try to go for not too nice browns and more yellowish browns and off browns and, and all these type of colors because I, uh, I want to give the sensation of rotten and so really when you try to choose there are so many tonalities that you can ch uh, choose from the different browns and colors that we have that you have to try to go for something that is matching, the, is, is giving this sensation of uh, rot. So I'm going to apply that, okay? So you see I apply this on the, sorry, the, because this miniature is really small one, but it's taking a lot of work. There is a lot of detail on these small miniatures, okay? So I, play, I, I do that and I come back. So next, I'm going to, while this is drying, I'm going to apply here, uh, I'm going to play, um, paint the smoke. You can use the same brown as before, but I'm going to go for uh, sanded rust. Uh, I want to go for, we can use even Tayan, I will use Tayan sand. So this is the color I will use. It's like a brownish, greenish, greyish color. So really uh, a color that have not a very nice, it's not well defined. And I want to give this a smoke, I, I don't want to go for a green green, I want to give this sensation of uh, sick or of a green or really the sensation that this is really a nasty smoke. 
I know that a lot of people go for this super bright green. Uh, when I go for a smoke, and to, I want to go for this type of, it's like a mutart green, uh, a mutart yellow, something like that, or more like a, this type of color that will have the sensation of sick or of, I don't know how to call it, but you get here the idea, okay? So I will do that, I paint the smokes, and then uh, we will only remain the, uh, yeah, I paint that and then back. Okay, next step, I'm, as you can see, I glued the guys on the bases. Uh, well, I glued this guy on the base, to be fair. And now, next step, I'm going to uh, paint the horns, and I will use Rakar Flesh. I want to use, uh, well, again, a white that is, uh, have this brown, greenish uh, tonality. We are going to paint with that. Okay. I will do the horns on the northern northerns that have horns with this color. So I will do that. There you see, no nothing special here. There's a big color. Black and flesh covers very well on top of black. So I do the other horns and I'm back. So we have done the horns, and now I will start, before doing the washes, I will start painting the things that I want to paint like uh, matte. And to do that, I will use uh, Gothel Brown, because it's, I was hesitating between Gothel Brown and Dryad Bark, but I think Gothel, Gothel, Brown, Gothel Brown will give a better... Yeah, will, will help me more on the contrast. So we don't need even a nice brush to do that. We take this cutter brown and we cover all the things that we want to make as slime or matte. Okay, it's going to be more like matte, slimy matte. Wait. Okay, so I'm going to do this and this is why we, I glued before the, the northern because they will look better integrated on all this part. You can see the texture I did with plaster looks great. So I will paint all the parts that I want to paint as a mat and I'm back once this is done. So this is how it looks like after applying uh, all the things we want to do as a mat. And now I'm going to apply Agrax Air Shade and we are going to apply this on the Narlins and on the mat. Okay? On the, first I will apply on the Narlins to be to be quite not to overdo. Okay, and on the Narlins I will apply it mainly on the clothes. I will not apply it on the skin. If you want to apply it only you can apply it on mainly on the face here, the part that is shaded by this type of hood. We'll apply it on the horns. And in that case, I will also apply it on the smoke. So on this smoke, and then as well on the metallic parts. Okay, in that and in this one, we are going to do it on the metallics. Okay, this one, for example, here. I want to do it on this metallic thing. And as well on the clothes. Okay, so we're going to do it there. And the clothes. The horn. I'm going to put a little bit on the face to increase the shading on the face, but I will not put it on the other parts of the skin. You can put a little bit just here, just in the places where you need. 
and again if you see that it's not doing too much with this device I do a second layer always washes sometimes we think that we can do it in one layer it's better to do it in two layers than one thick layer as the normal paints they are thin but when you, if you apply too much you will start pulling and start making um, strange finishings so it's better not to put too much at the same time if you want to go darker always two layers that I, I did a just recently a tutorial a tutorial on how to make fur we wanted really to have a quite a shade shaded parts and I did two layers of agate shade okay let's see I'll bring them in the smoke and then I will do this stuff and this guy the part I'm just let me show on the ground we are going to take a bad brush and we are going to start putting on all the ground you can be more generous and it can pull it's not going to be a bad thing that is pulling and it's making accumulations on on the on the mat. Okay. Even on the mat, you can use. I'm thinking now you can use the gloss uh, one because we want to give this uh, sensation of wet finishing. Yeah, but you can see it's quite fast. So I will do I will finalize all the application of the iron fair shade and I will come back once it's dry. So this is how it looks like now. Okay. So here you have and with the matte painted. And I will finish the this video here and, and do an expert. I wanted to try to do the full base but it's making a very long video and I prefer to split it here so in the next part I will start doing all the weathering I will finish this base and maybe I will start painting the armor remember next step it's going to be this part here okay so once the base is done because I want to paint the legs and then be able to put the clothes on top so this is how it looks like up to now okay you see here the Narglins coming, walking. I decided to put this guy in front instead of the back. Uh, and that's all for now. Please leave in the comments below and let me know what do you think. So first part on the painting tutorial of the Mortarion, although uh, the focus has been on the base. Uh, give a like if you have liked this video. Comment, share and subscribe if you not subscribed. And as usual, thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye!